What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, man, we have another day, another missing WWE action figures video, man. We've done this a couple times on this channel where we discuss these action figures, and basically what these videos are is we dive into a collection of figures that I give kind of like a personal information background on and sort of just describe how I've never come across these figures or I'm currently missing these figures in my collection, and we kind of break down all of the lore around it and everything like that, and usually after these videos, people hit me up with these deals and they'll send me links and we'll get it going and try to you know fill these holes in the collection here man but if you guys relate to any of this stuff maybe you can let me know down in the comment section below or maybe you have a bunch of figures that I don't have in my collection I get that a lot a lot of, a lot of times people will comment on my videos and say hi I have that figure and you don't and they like to hurt my feelings so with that being said man let's go ahead and dive into it and get into the missing WWE figures in my collection so the first figure man is a figure that so I'm pretty sure this released right before I started my YouTube channel we're talking about the rings that exclusive Scott Hall in the black and white NWO gear. This figure right here, man, I always thought was so beautiful. And specifically, this era of Mattel WWE Elite figures in this style packaging. To be honest, this might be my favorite era of packaging for Mattel outside of the early on days, like Elite 1 through 10 or whatever it was, 1 through 11. Those, that packaging right there, man, those two packagings are probably my favorite. This ringside exclusive Scott Hall right here is just beautiful. Look at it. I mean, it's just a beautiful figure. One that I have never seen at a flea market. I've never seen it at a toy show. I've never even witnessed this figure in person, I don't think, outside of my mind. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I would love to see some of these figures be in the Greatest Hits line. You know, we talk about these figures that increase in aftermarket value, and we talk about the Greatest Hits, and I know they don't want to slight ringside collectibles, and you want to keep the those exclusives like that exclusive, but we've seen Toys R Us exclusives and things like that re-released in the Greatest Hits line. We've seen Hollywood Elites. We've, we've seen Legends Elites. We've seen all these different things, man. So seeing some ringside collectibles exclusives in the greatest hits line would be really great and this is one of those figures i would like to see man but i've never had this figure man it really escapes me kind of makes me sick there's actually quite a few razor ramon slash scott hall figures that i'm missing and it makes me upset every single time i think about it but another one that goes hand in hand with this one man is going to be the ringside exclusive kevin nash now kevin nash is another one of those guys that i have missed out on in my collection in a lot of ways i have some of the figures i don't have all of them i'm missing a diesel or two from the collection i'm missing a lot of kevin nash figures from the collection and this is one of them, man. The Ringside Collectibles exclusive. And again, this era of packaging is so damn nice, man. And we got so many NWO-related figures in this packaging. Around this era, the, every freaking release from Ringside Collectibles e exclusive, I swear, it had this, something to do with NWO. You had the Wolfpack Sting, you had the Scott Hall, you had the Kevin Nash, you had the Macho Man. I mean, they were releasing all kinds of crazy and amazing stuff. But the Kevin Nash figure is a lot, another one that I never had my hands on, man. And there's just... Speaking of which, I don't even have the Ruthless Aggression Kevin Nash. I think it's the only elite. No, actually, I'm missing three. Three elites from the Ruthless Aggression Elite Wave, man. I'm missing the Edge and the Purple Camo, which makes me sick. I'm missing the JBL Ruthless Aggression, which also makes me vomit. And then I'm missing the Kevin Nash from the Shelton Benjamin Wave. I'm missing the Kevin Nash from that series there with Benjamin and John Cena. But that's besides the point, man. The Ringside Exclusive Kevin Nash and the Ringside Exclusive Scott Hall are the two figures that I was mainly talking about here. But those two figures right there just escaped me, man. They're just two of those figures that, you know, just never had the opportunity. And uh, just, yeah, never never didn't pre-order those figures or what have you. And again, it was before I started the channel. It was before I was buying, you know, every single thing and reviewing every single thing. So there's that. But another one is the Legends Rick Martel Elite right here, man. This is one that we've mentioned on the channel beforehand. Just a great figure. I actually, if anybody has this one, I'm going to actively say this, man. I really, I honestly just need the head sculpt for a certain custom I'm trying to work on. And you're probably like, what the hell are you even saying? I do want the full Elite in my collection with jacket and all. I would love to have that. Wait a minute. Now that I'm thinking about that, the time that I just said that out loud, I feel like I have seen this figure now. But it was randomly a year or two ago. I want to say it was two years ago at like a, at that Lexington Toy Con that we went to. I want to say they had this figure loose in a baggie. And it may have been complete, but I think they wanted 150 fifty dollars or something like that for it wasn't gonna pay that for a loose wwe elite man just what wasn't gonna do that so i have seen this figure once ever in person and it was then i don't know how i had like a damn brain blast from jimmy neutron just then did the kids even know what jimmy neutron is man 
I pray to God you know what Jimmy Neutron is. Nonetheless, let's keep going, man. The next figure on my list is going to be Elite 10 John Morrison. Now, this one actively I have had in my collection one time before, but I've never owned it again, and I turned it into a custom. Now, I do have multiple stories about random WWE figures that fit into that category. Had a figure, didn't really care about it that much to where I felt. I always feel like this. This is how I feel. I've kind of changed in this stance in my, like, as I've grown into my collecting, I've, I've gotten to be sort of a Grinch when it comes to this, where I'm like, can't use that figure because, you know, I don't want to lose that figure in the collection. It's kind of like erasing a figure out of my collection in favor of a custom or something like that. Used to do that all the time. Now I've kind of gotten out of that, but I used to, back in the day, man, I'd be like, I need, I, I need to make this figure. I would send a figure to the Shadow Realm just to make it into a custom, and that, you know, that happened to Elite 10 John Morrison. Never saw it again, man. Haven't seen it. I think I turned it into a promo Dolph Ziggler, even though I had 10, 12, 15 Dolph Zigglers already. What do you do? And Brad, I mean, that's just the case. But I mean, I've owned all kinds of different Morrisons. I've had multiples of the Elite 82. I've had multiples of the Survivor Series Elite, the Elite 4, and the Elite 10. Only a one and done, man. Only a one and done. I may have had one before that was beat to all hell, but that's a that's a whole other day for a whole other story. I think I said that backwards like a jackass. But our next figure is going to be the Elite 17 Mankind. Now, Elite 17 Mankind is a figure I've never even owned. I've never even owned the Elite SummerSlam Mankind, man. That is too... That's like my favorite era of Mankind right there, man. That's my favorite era of Mankind, and I, I've never owned either of those. I think I saw this SummerSlam Elite Mankind once ever when that SummerSlam wave hit, and it was at the Toys R Us location across from my college, and it was across the street. So the Toys R Us was across the street from my college, and we didn't have class on Friday, so on Thursdays, after class, this was like not during football season, so after football season, when I could go home on weekends, Thursdays after class, I would go to Toys R Us every single Thursday after class to check for new figures, and then I would head home right after that. I'd go to my location at home, obviously. I would go home for the weekend, and I found the SummerSlam Elite Wave, and I'm pretty sure I bought the Finn Balor. I bought the Finn... No, wait. I may have not bought the Finn Balor. I think I did buy the Finn Balor. I can't freaking remember, man, but saw that wave on the pegs. Didn't buy it, and yeah, here we are. Now we're missing Mankind figures, man. Now you fast forward, you don't buy stuff, and now you you have to make these videos. Next up, man, we have an interesting one, man. We have a... I know these are kind of random, and this is kind of, this kind of makes no sense whatsoever. The Elite 20 26 Road Dog and the Elite 27 Billy Gun, man. Never saw these. Never seen them. I've never even seen these in person. And I want to say, I, I feel like a lot of people, I don't know about anybody that collected back then. I need you to let me know down in the comment section below. I want to say these figures shell formed. I could be wrong about that. I want. I know X Pac shell formed the Elite 33, I think it was X Pac. I want to say that figure shell formed pretty decently. I'm, I want to say that the Elite 26 Road Dog and 27 Billy Gun did shell form. I never saw it, Bradley. I it never crossed my mind. I never got to see those figures. But what's crazy about these figures missing from my collection is that I have the Hall of Champions figures. So I have the much more sought-after versions. I would say that the Pink Billy Gun and the Hall of Champions Road Dog are much more sought-after. And the Hall of Champions line in general, really hard wave to collect. I feel like it didn't hit mass retail. And I wouldn't be shocked if we saw some of the Hall of Champions elites packed into the greatest hits line. I could absolutely see that because there were there, I just felt like that those figures were missing at least in my area, man. My target not until the last like couple years used to get nothing, man. My targets used to be just laughable. They used to be so sickening. And then for whatever reason, I don't know if it was me starting to buy everything or whatever the hell the channel whatever it whatever it is with all these toy hunts maybe helped out the area with the WWE figure Distri distribution or whatnot, but yeah, man, they started pumping out great figures, and I started getting a lot more stuff at retail, but back in the day, man, never used to find them, so I do have the Hall of Champions ones, had to buy them on the aftermarket for like $50 a piece or something like that when I went to Atlanta one time at this toy store, so you know, the, the more you know there, man, but we're gonna finish up our video today with a random one, and one again that I have owned before. I have owned this figure once before, and the same thing on some of the other figures. I've owned them, and I've, for whatever reason, I'd sell it or I'd trade it or I do some different stuff. There are some figures that I do regret trading or selling from back in the day, but this one right here, man, is going to be the Elite Four Fit 
Finley, man. This is another one that would be perfect for the greatest hits line. I feel like it's a figure that's really, like, forgotten about. You know, it's like a first and only time we've ever seen an elite of Finley. And he was such a big part of, you know, the Ruthless Aggression era. And right there early on in Mattel right there was a great time. I'm so glad they got this figure out there when they did. I think it was a genius release to put in there. So having Fit Finley here would be absolutely immaculate. And he's one that's missing from the collection, man. I think it's really tough to find him complete, too. Like, if you can find him with the jacket and the shillelagh, it's really difficult to do so. So that's definitely something you want to do there, man. But that is the last figure that I wanted to talk about here today, man. Elite Four Fit Finley. That is another one that just escapes me, man. And these figures, not every single figure on my list is just completely rare or you can't find them. Or, you know, there's probably deals out there that I could probably find. But these are figures that just are missing from the collection that make me vomit. Like, just, why do I not, how have I not either A, come across these, or B, put these in the collection already? The one, I, I'd say the number one figure, if you took any figure that I, there's a figure that Mattel has made that is at the top of my pin board. If I had, like, a rankings list, I could rank all of the figures that are missing from the collection that I really want or what have you, man. I would have at my number one spot, the number one figure that I want from Mattel or that Mattel has created is the Defining Moments Triple H, man. Just want that figure, man. I want it complete. I have my own custom version of it. I have the jacket, and I have pieces together that have created the figure. But, low-key, I want the figure in full with, like, the cloth pants, and I would, I really want the figure with the... Iron Cross, man, that's another one. That That's like his most iconic gear. Definitely one of his like top five iconic gears that Triple H has ever done. And it's just one that just evades me, man. It just evades me. So that is definitely the figure. But I think that pretty much wraps up the figures that are missing from my collection, man, or the missing WWE action figures that I wanted to discuss today, man. But if there are figures that have evaded you, I'd love to know all the personal stories and all those different things down in the comment section below, man. I always love interacting with you guys, so I always appreciate that, man. But Anyways, man, that is going to wrap up the video. Huge shout-out to our patron members of the MDT YouTube channel. appreciate all those fellows over there, guys. Thank you guys so very much for all your continued support, man. Lots of heat over there this past week or so so and continuing to be put out as we continue to progress on different things around the arena and continue to progress around things that may be fed related nonetheless man i'm getting out here thank you for watching subscribe to the channel follow me on instagram twitter and tiktok at my damn toys i'll see you guys in the next video have a blessed one and i'll catch you later